Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing today? Good to see you here on Sunday morning. This is what you're doing the first day of the week. You're making a decision. This is a real decision to put God first. You know, this week, as you go into the week, this is the beginning. And the best way to start off your day, the best way to start off your week is priorities. And what you prioritize, you invest in or spend time with. Most people really want to be successful, but they're not intentional. Like, I want to be successful, but I want it to happen by luck, by accident, and success doesn't work that way. Don't expect a return on an investment that you never made. And if you never invest in your spiritual life, you'll never have a harvest in your spirit, in your family, in your thinking. So this is not something that's good to do. It's a necessity. It's a value. It's a non-negotiable. I put God first every chance I get. When we're, like, as we're, living in, as we're living life, there is definitely a fight for your first. Because how you start something has a lot to do with how it ends up. And that's why early in the morning you want to put God first. Before you put on a YouTube, before you start talking to anybody, learn how to talk to God. Read the Bible, pray, put some worship on. You might not feel like, like it, but that's called discipline. This is what happens. You don't wait until you feel it. You start doing it and you develop an appetite for it. How many understand? You got a, a maturity. Maturity is not doing what you feel. Maturity is doing what's right even when you don't feel it. You guys understand that? Today you've made a decision to show up to the house of God. And I know this, not everybody felt like coming today, but there was something that took over your feelings. You woke up even before you wanted to wake up. You showed up. You got through all the obstacles. You're here. And because you made an investment, expect a return on your investment all week long. How many believe that? It's happening right now. We're here to learn. And we're gonna, what we're going to be talking about today is a pretty deep subject for American Christians. And the reason I say it's a d deep subject for American Christians, because if you were Jewish, you would understand what we're talking about because they understand the word I'm going to talk to you about today, and the word is covenant. I, I, now, I want you to understand this word because if you don't understand this word, covenant, you don't understand your relationship with God. You don't even understand it. You don't understand the sacrifice of Jesus shedding his blood. You don't even get none of it. It makes no sense. It just sounds crazy. But when you begin to understand this word covenant, you'll never look at yourself the same way again. And you'll never look at God the same way again. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to realize how powerful you really are because of who you're partnered up with. Many of us think we're doing this on our own and we're begging God to help us during the day. But you don't understand that you're in partnership with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when he's in partnership with people, he never leaves them and he's always there with them. So where you show up, he shows up with you. You don't even know that. God, show up. He goes, I'm already here. When you're in covenant with God, that means you're in partnership with God. It's crazy. But, you know, back in the day, you know, um, there was some little cholos at school <laughs> that didn't even weigh 100 pounds, but they had big mouths. I mean, you ever, ever met a, a little gangster that had a big mouth and you know you could knock him out, but you didn't mess with him because you knew he had backup. He had some big brothers. He had, come on, he, he was deep in the neighborhood. He had a name. It wasn't his name. It was his family's name. I'm letting you know, I didn't mess with him, not because I didn't think I could beat him up. I didn't mess with him because who he was associated with. I want you to understand, there's some demons that understand. They're not messing with you because they think they can handle you. Because, but if you're associated with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that resurrected from the bed, come on, they respect that name. But you got to know who's backing you up. 
I don't know how far I'm going to get into this because this is very deep. But if we could get into this today and you could begin to understand the covenant relationship we have with God, you'll never be the same again. You're going to start being confident. You're not a victim. You're going to realize this, there's more for you than are against you. And every battle that you're facing, come on, you got backup and you got more than enough. That's why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you. Come on, he's in you. Greater is he that is in you. He's in you than the one that's coming against you. Don't you realize that God is in you, believers? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. And we ask you, Lord, to give us divine revelation as we study your word. Because if we don't understand it, it produces nothing. You said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Father, we want to understand your word, understand your truth. And if someone's here for the first time, may they understand that you want to have a relationship with them, partnership with them. You want to be their friend and you want to be part of every part of their lives. You want to empower them, help them, give them wisdom. Everything you have, you want to share with them. May they just understand that's what this whole thing's about. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Say it with me. A covenant God. We serve a God of covenants. Now what's a covenant? It's an agreement with conditional promises that God uses to establish a relationship or friendship with human beings or humanity. God creates covenants to share his abundance his abundant life, and his blessings with mankind. Every covenant, every agreement that God makes with man has defined blessings for keeping the covenant and consequences for breaking it. So covenant is this. God, God decided to have a relationship with every one of us, and this is what he wants to do. He wants to share everything he has with us. He goes, everything I am, I want to give it to you. Every blessing I have, I want to give it to you. Everything I can do, I want to give that to you. I want to be in relationship with you. I want to empower you. I want you and me to be really good friends. So this is not a religious relationship. This is a loving, intimate relationship. This is super deep. What he's saying, I want to share everything. With you. This is more than coming to church. This is coming into partnership with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And what he's saying, come on, I have everything that you need and I want to share it with you. So I'm going to give you a way for you to access it. And I'm going to define the blessings and they're throughout scripture and promises that are available to you. But understand there will be parameters for you to tap into it, and stay in covenant. So this is how a covenant was, is established. Or I'm going to answer the question, what happens in a covenant? So, so if me and you entered in a covenant agreement, there would be some things that we do, and it sounds a little crazy, especially when I begin to mention it. But gang members know about this. There's a saying in the hood Blood in, blood out. And what they're saying is you can't get into this hood until you shed some blood because we want to make sure that you're giving your life for it. They didn't make that up. It's covenant. First, the agreement of a covenant is sealed and enforced by shedding blood. A covenant says this, a signature is not good enough. Without shedding blood, a covenant does not exist. In the old covenant that God made with man, God promised all kinds of blessings to them. He he gave them victory over their enemies. He gave them promises that if they planted crops, they'd be rain and they'd be fruitful. They, he promised them that if they, everywhere they put their foot on that land, the land would be theirs. And wherever enemies were in that land, he would help them defeat them. It was part of the covenant. God made a deal that if, that he said this, 
everywhere you go, don't fear because I will be with you. There will be no enemy that will be able to withstand you because your battle will now become my battle. You'll never have a need because now I will supply all of your needs. It was a good deal. But you couldn't enter in the covenant unless you were willing to give your whole life to it. And the sign of shedding blood, blood represents life. Say it with me. Blood represents life. So to enter into a covenant, you'd have to shed blood and you were saying, I'm giving my life to this. It wasn't like marriage today that we look at it as a contract. That means if it works out, I'm in. If it doesn't work out, I'm out. Covenants were meant forever. And they had conditions. So in Genesis 17, 11, where God went into covenant with a man named Abram or Abraham, God told him, to enter into this covenant, you must shed blood. And this is what they'd have to do. Let's look at it. In Genesis 17, 11, you must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. What that meant, to enter in a covenant with me, you must get circumcised. Man, well, who would do that? That's some serious pain. And we're not talking about being circumcised as a little baby. We're talking about grown men. God is saying, I'm going to give you everything I got, but I need some shedding of blood. And I want to know that you're in. So this is what I want you to do. Every man in your family, get them circumcised. And once they're circumcised, we're in. Everything I have is now yours. Every battle you fight is now mine. I guarantee you success in everything you do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to share our lives. Now, some of us, if we knew there was a really, 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 really rich person and he was willing to go on covenant with you, you'd cut. Like, how much, what do you got? Oh, I got two billion in an account. And if you go on the cover of me, all my billions are now yours and you have full access to them. You say, what part do I need to cut? <laughs> but understand this, the one that's saying I want to be in covenant with you loves you so much. And I want you to get this because this new covenant, not the covenant that God made with Abram, but the covenant that God made with you, you weren't the one that was cut. You weren't the one that shed the blood. God sent his only son to, to that cross to shed his blood, to enter into the covenant with you and give you everything that he has. So this relationship with you cost Jesus his life. Let's not forget there was a high price to establish a relationship with you. So stop doubting God's love for you. Stop doubting how much God is for you. And stop doubting how serious this thing is. Because this covenant was not established by blood of animals. It wasn't established by your blood. It, was, it wasn't established by a, a circumcision. Your blood, your covenant was established by Jesus coming on earth, living a righteous life, and bleeding to the point of death for you. How bad does God want a relationship with you? He shed his complete blood for you. In Matthew 26, 28, it says, for this is my blood, this is Jesus saying this, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. This is what he's saying. Your sins need to be forgiven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shed my blood so all your debt is paid for so me and you can go in to this covenant relationship. You didn't pay the price. I paid the full price. And everything that I have, I want to make it available to you. I, I want you to get this. 
when Jesus died and resurrected from the dead, he received an inheritance, which is everything that God has. And what he's saying is, I already died, resurrected, I got the inheritance, but now I want to share it with my partners. And I'm making it available because you, on your own, will never be righteous enough to enter into this covenant. But I am righteous enough to enter this covenant. I'm perfect. I've overcome. And I want to let you know, I already paid the price. So just believe and receive everything I have for you. Starting with complete forgiveness of sins. So why are you forgiven? Not because you're, you're begged, begged enough. Like, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And then God says, you begged enough. You got it. You're forgiven because Jesus shed his blood. And all you had to do was receive the forgiveness, the full forgiveness, 100% forgiveness of your sins has been paid for. It's a covenant promise. All you have to do is believe it and receive it. Your faith is not in you. Your faith is in your covenant. We're slowing this stuff down because I, I'm telling you, once you guys understand this, most Christians don't understand their covenant all across America, all across the world, and they're begging for stuff that's been paid for, and their faith is still in their religion. Their faith is in their actions. Their faith is in their discipline. Their faith is not in their covenant with Jesus Christ. And since Jesus, come on, he ratifies the covenant, that means he guarantees it. All you got to do is believe it. So when he forgives you, he absolutely not only forgives you, he erases it off your record. Just like it never happened because in his eyes it never happened because people forgive you but they don't forget. God says, I forgive you, I erase it, I forget it because the forgiveness is not because of you. The forgiveness was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now his blood represents you. I love his blood represents me. You know what that means? That now since his blood cleanses me, his blood touches me, and it's his blood that, that's, that solidifies my covenant of forgiveness. Now when they pull me up, all they got is his DNA. So now what his DNA qualifies for, I qualify for. Because understand this, when he shed his blood, he gave it to me. He gave it to you. It's not my righteousness, it's his righteousness. I know, I know I'm talking a lot today, but I got to get this, I got to get this radical, come on, I got to get this in you so you understand that you're in a covenant relationship with God and it was paid for by his blood. So when he forgives you, you're forgiven. I know it's deep. God, Holy Spirit, reveal it to us. Back in the day, how they entered into biblical covenant. One of the things that they would do is they would cut their palms. So now if me, a Christian, wanted to enter into a covenant, this is what he'd be doing. He'd cut his palm, I'd cut my palm, or my wrist. That's how it was. It was serious. And then we'd shake hands. That's where shaking hands came from. And it would represent our blood becoming one. It would mean as, a, as the blood mixed... It symbolized our life, his life flowing into me and my life flowing into him. We are now covenant partners. So we'd be saying, I'd be saying, Christian, me and you are going to become one. We're never going to be separated. I want you to get this. Everything I have, my bank account, my family, my name, everything I represent, I'm going to make accessible to you my property. We own stuff together now. And everything you got is mine too. Hmm. Now, it might not be that great a deal with me and Christian, but it sure is a great deal with me and God. 
Because all I bring is my nonsense. All I bring is my liabilities. All I bring is my sin. And God says, I, I understand that all you have is liabilities. All you got is debt. And all you got is problems. But I'm choosing to enter in a covenant relationship with you. And this is what I want to do. I want me and you to become one. And I want to give you everything I got. Give God some praise. He's a good God to want to enter the relationship with us. It's not fair. So the first thing, there'd be some shedding of blood. I know it sounds crazy, but that's how it works. And that's what Jesus dying on the cross is all about, to solidify his covenant with us. Number two, in a covenant, two lives become one. Literally, all my assets, all my liabilities will now be shared with my covenant partner. In 1 Corinthians six seventeen, it says, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now, you got to, we got to stop right there. When you go into covenant relationship with the Lord, you didn't accept the religion. You became one with God. Now, when you understand this, I'm one with God, when you show up, it's impossible for God not to show up with you. See, if you're not aware of this, you're intimidated and you're full of fear every battle you're in because you're thinking you're alone because you don't understand your covenant. When you show up to the interview, God's with you. When you show up to the battle, God's with you. When you show up to court, God's with you. Come on. When you show up to the biggest battles of your life, God says, you're not alone. Me and you are absolutely one. I remember how this worked that I didn't realize the, the, the reality of this until I was casting out a demon out of someone. And when I was casting out a demon out of someone, the, the demon in the person was terrified when they looked at me. So the demon kept putting his head down. No, 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 no. I go, look at me. I don't know what's going on. But if he was scared, I said, look at me. No! He started saying, no, I can't look at you. And I go, why? <laughs> why can't you look at me? I'm just playing around with I don't know what's going on. And he says this, I see Jesus in you. When I started realizing that he saw Jesus in me, then I started realizing that me and Jesus are one. Where I show up, he shows up. It's not my battle, it's his battle. Some of you don't have a lot of faith because you don't know that when you came into covenant with God, you became one with him and the one that's in you is greater than the one that's against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're one with God. And that's why Peter, shadow, he, Peter's walking, his shadow heals people because he's aware of his covenant. Because it wasn't Peter's shadow that healed them. It was what's in the shadow. In his shadow was Peter. But in the deeps of the shadow was Jesus himself. The spirit of God was touching them. You have to understand covenant. You become one. Look what it says. In John 14, 20. When I am raised to life again, which Jesus is already resurrected from dead, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are mine, and I am in you. <laughs> now, this is what he did. He cleansed you of all your sins. He cleaned you up so he could move in. See, unless he absolutely forgives you, he can't move into something that's unholy. So he has to deal with your sin so he doesn't bring judgment. He brings blessing. So he sends his son to be judged for the crimes that we committed for breaking our covenant, our first covenant with God. And he says, now we're going to start a new covenant. And this covenant is not going to be based on your righteousness. This covenant is going to be based on my righteousness. I'm going to forgive you 100%. Then I'm going to move in you. You're going to move in me and I'm going to move in you. 
We're going to be one. Does that give you a little confidence when you show up places like, what? Get it, what? Yeah, what? What? Yeah. Some of you guys are praying for God to show up, and he's saying, you're praying wrong. You don't even know who you are in me. Lord, Holy Spirit, move. He goes, I'm here. What are you talking about? Show up. Come. He goes, I'm in you. That's the covenant. We're one. You can't run from me. Are you still with me? We're slowing down on this, but two lives become one. See, this is when we become one. Get this. All that God owns can do and is belongs to us, belongs to you. All that God owns, this is becoming one. All that he can do and all he is, now because you're in covenant, belongs to you. And that's why now you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why there's no sin that you can overcome. Stop allowing your identity to be your weakness of your sin. Make your identity your covenant relationship with God and realize this, all that God can do, all that God has, and all that God is belongs to me. That's covenant. You got to get rid of the poverty mentality that makes you think you can. See, some of you guys are living like paupers when you should be living like princes. You're living like paupers because you have a proper, a, a proper mentality. You don't understand that you're a son and daughter of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You belong to him so you can start living like him. Come on. You can start doing miracles like him. You can start prospering like him. You can start being victorious like him. Does anybody begin to understand that God has started a covenant with you and you're one with him? Now, get this. If everything he is, he owns, and can do belongs to you, you're not in covenant until you release this. Everything you are, you can do, and you own belongs to him. See, a lot of people think they're in covenant with God, but they're not in covenant with God because they have not given their whole lives to the Lord yet. Some of you guys cannot give your sin up and you're saying, I'm a covenant of God. God says, you, you've said the prayer, but you never went into covenant with me. You're still a worker of iniquity. You're still, you're still holding back your sin. You're not in covenant with me. You're in covenant with the devil still. Some people can't give because they, they're not willing to give up everything they have. And God says, you got to give me your mind. You got to give me your body. Come on, you got to stop sleeping around. You got to give me your mouth. You got to stop gossiping. You come on, you got to give me your finances. You got to give me your car, your house. Everything you have is now mine and everything I have is now yours. How many know it's a good deal? Look at this in Romans 8, 17. If we are God's children, rhetorical kind of statement, we will get the blessings God has for his people. Now, we're in covenant. If we're God's children, that means we're in covenant with him, then we're going to get all the blessings he has for us. Look at this. If we're his children, we're in covenant with him, he will give us all that he has given Christ. Oh, I got to stop there. What does God, what is, what is, what, is, what does, has Christ received? Everything. All authority. All power. All riches. The whole universe. Come on, everything is in Christ. And everything that's in Christ and for Christ is for you. His inheritance is now your inheritance. Stop being jealous of your neighbor and start realizing what you got. Until you change your mentality, you'll never have it. It's not that it's not for you. My Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The reason you don't got it, you don't know what you have. 
So you remain ignorant and you remain defeated. You remain ignorant and you remain depressed. You remain ignorant, come on, and you remain in poverty. You remain ignorant and you remain stagnant. But there's somebody today that's starting to realize my faith is no longer in me. My faith is no longer in my education. My faith is in my covenant. He will give us all that he has given Christ. What? Now, you're not going to totally understand all this until you really study and meditate on it. But until you get this covenant mentality, you can't accomplish more than you're accomplishing because your greatest enemy is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is the agreement in your head with the devil. What do you mean by that is, until you start getting your thinking, lining up with God's thinking, your life is going to end up being the same old thing. Not because you weren't redeemed, not because you're not in covenant. You don't know what God has given you, so you remain living way below what's been paid for for you. God is saying, I give you absolutely everything. So you got to give your life. Jesus crucified his life, absolutely gave everything. You got to absolutely crucify your life. Whatever sin it is. If you're in an adulterer, don't act like you're, you're in covenant relationship with God. You, you got to give up your adulterous affair and give that up. I mean, if every day you're smoking weed, you're in a covenant relationship with the weed. You're not in a covenant relationship with the God that sets you free, absolutely sets you free. Freedom is your heritage. Freedom is, come on, freedom, everything that God is, you are. Jesus ain't smoking weed. He don't need to smoke weed. And when he's saying everything I am, I give it to you. Now, don't get mad if you're a weed smoker. Get set free. Because whatever high that you're depending on is a false high. There's a bigger high that, come on, you've been looking for something to make you whole. And there's a God that says, all my joy is yours. All my peace is yours. All my victory is yours. Come on, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay. Galatians 2.20 says this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. You got, I, I just think we read this stuff, we don't get it. Like, is it metaphors? And is this a Christian metaphorically? Is this a poetic? It's not poetic, it's fact. Once you crucified your life, that means you gave it all up. You became one with the Lord, and now he's living in you. Some people don't get set free because they've not totally released their sin life yet. They're Christian by name, but they're not Christian by covenant. Well, I tried going to the way. It didn't work for me. Nah, you just tried coming to church. You tried coming to a building. You tried going to holy wars, but you never totally surrendered your life. And you still don't understand what we're talking about. But there's an experience that when you give it all up for Jesus, like he gave it all up for you, you become one with him. And when you become one with him, it's undeniable. Your life is totally transformed. How can you not change if the one that created the heavens and the earth and resurrected from the dead now lives in you. But Christ lives in me. See, this is the idea. Give up your adultery, give up your addiction, give up your homosexuality, give up your lesbianism, give up your craziness, give up your anger, give it all up so that you can be what God called you to be. You can't be one with God if you're one with your sin. Stop right there. Because we got to speak about these things. I'm going to tell you this. There's no such thing as a Christian gangbanger. I'm, bang, I'm banging for Jesus. Ah! And whatever sin you want to name, there's no such thing as a Christian 
sinner. Because Christians have repented of their sin. The pastor, the Christian sin, they, 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 they sin, but they don't live a lifestyle of sin. Because as soon as they fall, they go, that's not me. I repent of that right now. God, set me free. And if I confess my sins, God is faithful. It's part of my covenant. He'll forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I don't stay in it. Because that's not me anymore. I got the power to overcome this thing. Come on, does anybody have the one that understand you got the power to overcome whatever sin you're dealing with? So I live... I, it is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. I give myself to him and we're one now. How did they enter into biblical covenants? Let's go back and continue about this part. They became one. One of the things that they would do back in the day day is they would exchange coats. I give you my coat, you give me your coat. This probably happened like in high school. Your girlfriend wore your Letterman jacket. Now, there were some girls, when they were wearing the Letterman jacket, I would say whose name on it, and basically they were saying, I'm not available. I belong to the quarterback. So almost it was saying off limits, don't be trying to pick up on the quarterback's girl. She's wearing his jacket. So back in the day, there were certain coats that people wore and they would know, I, I know that coat. That coat belongs to this family. And all of a sudden after a covenant exchange, now that family was wearing the coat of the other family. And then you start realizing, did you guys just enter the covenant? I go, we did. I recognize that coat. And that's why, and I want you to now understand the exchange of coats meant this. This action says, I give you all my wealth. All my wealth is yours and all your wealth is mine. And this is why in the Bible when, when, when Joseph's father gave him a coat, his brothers got totally offended because they knew what it represented. When his father gave him the coat, he realized he's given him his full inheritance, not us. So now when you, I want you to exchange with wealth. Now, so when you give your life to Jesus, God gives you everything he has. So when you show up, you don't show up with your coat, you show up with his coat. And you know what that means? All of his wealth now belongs to you. All of his wisdom belongs to you. All of his joy belongs to you. All of his wisdom belongs to you. Is there anybody ready to tap in to the covenant that God has made already through his son? Exchange coats. Whew, there's going to be some exchanging of coats around here. The other thing they would do to become one, they would exchange weapons. This act would say this, I give you all my power and my strength. I will fight for you even, even if it costs me my life. So we exchange weapons, we would be saying this, all my power to fight, everything I have. If I have soldiers, everything I have is now yours. So understand this, your battles are not my battles. In this covenant, you got to understand, when you're in covenant with God, there's no such thing as you going through a battle on your own. Because God is saying now, we exchange weapons. Put on the full armor of God. It's not your armor, it's his armor. And what he's saying now, every battle that you're in is no longer your battle. Every battle that you're in, we exchange weapons. This is what we're saying. God is saying all my power and all my angels, come on, and all my sovereignty. When you show up, I show up. Now, so I fight with a covenant understanding. Now, we see this in the Bible with David. Why was David so confident about killing Goliath? The reason he was so confident about killing Goliath is because he knew who he was in covenant with. See, he was, see everybody was talking how big giant Goliath was, and David was referring to something totally different. 
This is what David said when he faced it. Understand that the, the Goliath was probably around 11 feet tall, 9 feet tall. I don't know, but he's a big, tall guy. Champion warrior, that means he never lost a battle because they used to fight till death. His sword might have weighed more than David altogether. But David's faith was not in his slingshot. David's faith was in his covenant. This is what's going to make you an amazing warrior for Jesus. Your faith is no longer going to be in your education. Your faith is not going to no longer going to be in your gifts. Your faith is no longer going to be just in your strategies. Your faith is going to be in your covenant relationship with God. So how do we know this? Look what David said. Then David spoke. Now understand, no one spoke to Goliath because they were scared. For 40 days, this, this massive man would stand in front of the whole army and say stuff like this. I dare one of you guys to fight me. We don't need to, ever, to get everybody involved. Just to pick up your, pick your baddest warrior. I'll fight him. Whoever wins, wins the whole battle. For 40 days he was badgering them. And the whole army of Israel, the whole army of God, the whole army of people that were in covenant with God said nothing because they didn't know who they were in covenant with. They, are, they were aware of their giants, but they weren't aware of their covenant. So David has a different mindset. He's not stronger than them. He's not more experienced than them, but he has a different reference point. So this is what David says. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes the grace, this grace of this taunting from Israel? What's going to happen to the guy that beats the guy down? See, most people are talking about all their problems and David was talking about his victory. Be careful that you're not describing everything you're going through, how big the giant is, or what obstacles and the devil's messing me up. You need to start speaking. Come on. You need to start describing your victory, not describing your problems. What if someone takes them out? What do they get? For this is, look at for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncoveted? He has no covenant with the creator of the universe. Who does he think he is messing with people that are in covenant? Don't you understand that God and me have already exchanged weapons? He's not fighting against me. He's fighting against the creator of the universe. Who do you think you are, buddy? For who does the uncircumcised Philistine that think that he is taunting and defied the armies of the living God? See what he said? He's fighting against the armies of God. Because, see, everything that God has is not mine in battle, too. I'm going to give you another example of, uh, I ran into, spirit, this is all spiritual warfare, but I was, I was helping someone else get delivered of demons. And then this, this person that was demonized was looking all around the room like, oh, 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 oh. like scared too. And I'm like, I go, so I asked the demon, what are you looking at? The other one was looking at me scared, but this one was looking around me scared. So I go, what do you see? And this is what he said. This is what he says. He said this, millions of angels. So what he saw was beyond the room. He saw the backup from heaven. What God was showing, come on. What he was seeing was the armies of the living God in that room with me. Because, see, you, as soon as you become a Christian, you get seated in heavenly places. You never show up alone. There's always more for you than are against you. Come on. Does anybody want to understand the covenant that you're in? Okay. I, I'm going to have to do part two sometime. I don't know when. Because we got more stuff on this covenant, but this is all we could cover today. 
But we've seen in Scripture, this happened over and over. When Elisha was surrounded by a whole army and his servant was freaked out. Two against a whole army. Elisha wasn't sweating it. He was kicking back, drinking some tea, not smoking some weed. <laughs> drinking some tea, kicking back. But his servant, because he wasn't aware of the covenant he was in, was freaked out. We're all going to die. And then Elisha told, prayed. It says, don't be afraid, Elisha told him. For there are more on our side than theirs. Then Elisha prayed, oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. He began to see, come on, the weapons of God, the armies of God, backing them up. And God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is saying when you show up to your most, come on, your most, most dangerous situations, don't you get focused on the danger. You get focused on your covenant. Don't you focus on your slingshot. Focus on the Lord. Lord of heaven's army, I'm saying I'm one with you, and what you go through, I go with you. Come on, give God some praise. It's all set. Christian, come up here and close this out. I'm in preach mode, so I'll just keep on preaching, so I got to watch myself. Let's all stand up. How many understand a little bit more about your relationship with the Lord? Okay. This is what we're going to do. Let me see. Why don't you do this? Why don't we do this? Why don't we come this Wednesday? Because I'm getting ready to go to Africa next Sunday. If you come this Wednesday, I'm going to show you, finish this thing about the covenant that you're in. Um, this is probably the most important teaching you've ever heard in your life because it's going to put all the pieces together. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this. The exchange of names. That God's actually exchanged names with us. And so when he tells you, you could ask anything in my name, he is kind of like a power of attorney. He goes, everything I can do in my name, you can now do in my name. We got to understand that's part of the covenant. But I'm telling you, don't do everything you can to show up Wednesday because... People perish for lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you this, you'll never get educated to a next level and start, you stay, start, until you start taking your spiritual transformation of your mind seriously. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your understanding, your identity cannot be in you, cannot be in this world, cannot be in your lust, cannot be in your weaknesses. Your identity must become associated, tied into your covenant with God. And this is the kind of message you got to hear over and over and over and confess over yourself. So you begin to understand, I'm not in this alone. I'm in covenant with God. Me and him are absolutely one. He lives not there in outer space. He lives in me. Oh, my Lord. So that's why I could go to Africa and Uganda and not be terrified because I'm going with the armies of the living God. And I, that, what I mean is... Greater is the ones that are with me than I don't care who's coming against me. The one that's with me is bigger than anything that's coming against you or me. And understand this, the covenant I have is no greater than the covenant you have. The only thing, the only difference is I might understand my covenant better so I could get the benefits of it and you still don't understand it. And once you understand it, next level living happens. Amen. Love you guys. Now, I'll tell you this. Let's get serious. God's training an army to take over the world. But we have to know the covenant that we're in to be able to do this. Some of us are struggling with stuff you should not be struggling with. You are trying to do it on your own. You don't realize the one that's with you already conquered it. And you can start depending on him instead of depending on yourself. I'll end it right there. I preach it too much right <laughs> We're getting part two right now. Come on. Come Wednesday. How many received that word today? Come Wednesday. I believe God wants us to get this message in our heart that I want, to, I want to establish a covenant with you. And the way he's done that for all of us is by giving his son Jesus to all of us. This is how God is going to establish this covenant with you, to be able to forgive you, to give you a new life, 
and a new future and a new beginning. He's done it through Jesus Christ. So today we have an opportunity to respond to this message and to say yes to God. Yes, God, I want to be in relationship. God, I want to begin this covenant with you. And the way we begin is by putting our faith in Jesus. It's not by being a good person. It's not, not by trying to earn it. There's nothing we can do to earn it. But it's by putting our faith in Jesus. By repenting of the way we've lived and say, God, you know, I'm sorry, God, for the way I've lived. And I want to come clean and I want to give my life completely to you. In this moment, if you're saying, I want to be saved, I want to be forgiven of my sin, and I want to know if I were to die today, that I would spend eternity with God in heaven forever. If that's you, I'm going to ask you right now to just simply raise up your hand. And you're going to raise your hand by, and saying this, God, I'm ready to receive that covenant with you. I'm ready to receive forgiveness and I'm ready to be, uh, to know this, that I have eternal life. If that's you, when I count to three, just raise your hand all over this building. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand right here. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else you're saying over here? I see your hand. I see those four, five, six hands right now in the back. I see those three hands over here to my left. I see your hand. Come on, can we give those that raise your hand a round of applause? We're going to do one more thing. If you raise your hand this morning, would you do one more bold step for me? Would you welcome, we want to welcome you up here to the front of this, this stage here. I'm sorry, this altar here. And we want to pray with you. We have a team right now that's ready and equipped to pray with you and congratulate you. Give us the honor of being able to pray with you. Make your way out of your seat. If you raise your hand, even from that back row now, Come on, let's give those that raise their hand, let's give them a round of applause. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Come forward, we wanna pray with you. If you raise your hand, come forward. We wanna pray with you right now. Congratulations. Church, let's give them a round of applause right now. Yes. some more we need some more people to pray if you guys can help us out thank you lord amen praise god this is awesome look at all those that have come to the front guys this is this is the best thing the best decision we could make right now congratulations look he's got his son up here too what's up man congrats Let's do this. For those that came forward right now, could you do me a quick favor? Just look at me for a second. I want to share something with you. What we're going to do, we're going to help you grow in your walk with God. Your next step is a class called Starting at the Way. And in this class, you're going to learn about what it means to be saved. And we're going to help you get baptized. Your life will never be the same again. But we're not going to just leave you hanging. We're going to keep you growing. There's a whole journey that you can go on and, and, and to grow in your spiritual walk with God. Okay, in this class, once you go to, once you get signed up, the person in front of you, they're going to sign you up. Once you go to this class, we have a book for you, a special book that's a devotional book, it's a teaching book, and it shows your whole growth journey here at The Way, and we're going to help you get started. Okay, so get signed up with the person in front of you. For those that just came up to pray, what you'll do is open your app and click the I Got Saved banner. Okay, open your app and click the I Got Saved banner, and let's get them signed up. Are we excited for those that got saved today? Let's pray. Bow your heads with me. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus thank, you thank you for dying on the cross on the and raising from the dead so I can be saved. I put my faith in you. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Savior. You are my Lord. From this moment forward, I repent of my sins. I turn away from my old life and I give my life to you. Today, you have established a covenant with me. My life is yours, and all you have is mine. Thank you for blessing me with forgiveness, with mercy, with a new life. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. Fill me with your spirit and, and lead me and guide me to live for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we give God some praise this morning? 
Church, don't forget, part two of this is Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, trust me, you don't want to miss this message on Wednesday. It's going to be powerful. We love you so much. Um, God bless you. We will see you this Wednesday at 7 p.m.